Please adjust the slider until the dog and cat are friends. Oh, that's so fucking cute. Okay. Like, right there would be friends, right? Because right here, they're, um... I mean, even right here, in some relationships, they could be fucking. And then in this one, they could be way more than friends at that point, right? So, wouldn't we want to keep them, like, here? Let's do that. Nice cock, Speedy. Thanks, bro. This is the story of a man named Stanley. We already know. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where... He Bro, we already know. We already played this for two hours the other day. All right, this is the Stanley Parable chat. We uh, we have two episodes on YouTube. Um, it's completely caught up on YouTube, and uh, this will be probably episode three on YouTube. Um, last time we found a lot of new content, a lot of new endings, and also endings involving a bucket. Uh, there was also an ending in which we were um, breaking our legs a few times and didn't quite finish it. So we're gonna start with that one, I would imagine. Let's go see what type of crazy shit we can get into today. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Missed a memo. The good old bucket. Just Stanley and the bucket. Off on another thrilling adventure together. We got the bucket. So this is where a, mu a bunch of the new content was, but it seems like all these other endings involving the bucket are fun. Stanley so clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. But I went to the right This was chair. not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this better than the meeting room? Nope. Yes, no. Never mind. The bucket was wrong. Fuck Stanley the bucket of ice, bro. To go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Go there. Go to the cargo lift. Good, Andros, thanks said for the, the 21 months. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. Can I make it to that walkway? Yeah, do you think I can make it to that walkway, chat? There's an open door there, too. I could probably jump off here and get to that walkway. Also... That's... That's one of the final Stanley collectibles I need right there, isn't it? Yo, we need to come back here after this run. Because I don't think I could strafe jump to that. Interesting. Okay, we're coming back here then. Because I didn't realize we could probably go to that. And then somehow we need to find um, a vent to get over to that last collectible. And also, it looks like we can do something over there. Holy shit. In here, said the bucket. Go into this dark room over here. Stanley once again obeyed blindly. Now pick up the phone, said the bucket. Pick up the phone, and it will take us back home, where we can go about life together. Flashback. This is the sad story of a man named Stanley and his bucket. Once upon a time, I gave Stanley a bucket because I thought he was lonely and could use a friend. And then, very distressingly, he began to believe the bucket could speak to him. This is my house. Does that look like a face to you? Do you guys see the face on that little box? It's a cute little face, dude. It's a little smiler. It kind of looks like a... A foreshortened duck face. Dude, ducks are fucking awesome, bro. 
A lot of people have ducks as pets now. Not me, though. Um, I'm trying to read some of these uh, v things, but you can't really read them. What do I do in my house? It doesn't seem like there's anything going on in my house. Am I missing something? The bucket, I didn't see you there. Hello, Stanley, it's me, your bucket. Press U to take me to work with you. The Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket was merely meant to provide the comforting glow of companionship. It doesn't literally talk and give you orders. Whatever Stanley is hearing the bucket say to him is just in his head. Lately, I've been concerned about him. Wouldn't you be concerned as well? To see him delusional like this, obsessing over an inanimate metal object? I want to say something to him, but I don't know how I can convince him. I don't know if he'll listen to me. Well, I'll try anyway. Stanley, can you hear me? Listen to me. It's just a bucket. It can't think, it can't talk. All it will ever truly do for you is effectively transfer a liquid from one location to a different location. That's it. It doesn't do anything else. <sighs> you see, he's not listening. Mood he's still taking orders from How the bucket. How romantic. You know, once upon a time it was me he took orders from. Me he trusted and listened to. Now all he cares about is his awful bucket. This stupid hunk of metal. Oh, are you cooking dinner? It's sad. I suppose he doesn't need me anymore. From now on, he's just going to cling to this bucket, this cold, empty bucket, this sort of shiny bucket. Hmm. Well, I'll give it this. The bucket does have a nice shine to it. I even told the narrator not to worry about the bucket several times. But he should have worried. He should have worried. Yes, I suppose on closer inspection that it doesn't quite look like your average hardware store bucket. It's just a little more, um, what am I trying to say? Sturdier, more capable of transporting liquid. Like it would be better at moving an amount of water from one room to another. We can relive the same day over and over. Chad, imagine if you could just keep reliving the best day of your life over and over and over and over and over. Oh my god, what am I saying? Better at carrying water from room to room. It's a bucket. It's literally just a bucket. Why do I feel some need to point out the ways in which it's so much more than just a regular bucket? I'm gonna shit in the bucket. And then we'll see what the narrator... Press Q to go home to work to home to work to home. Oh no. I'm... I'm having feelings. For the bucket. No, 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 no. What's going on? Why do I want to be with the bucket? Hear what the bucket has to say. Do anything it asks. What's wrong with me? I don't understand. Perhaps, perhaps, if I had the bucket, this would be less confusing. Yes, the bucket could tell me what to do in this troublesome situation. Where are the rose petals on the floor leading to the bedroom? Good enough. I can see you put effort in. Chad, I want to give a content warning. I think I'm about to fuck the bucket. So, do with that what you may. Stanley, give me the bucket. Give it to me. Give me the bucket, Stanley. I need it. Give it to me now. Give it or I'll... 
Chat, did you close your eyes too? The game told us to close our eyes. Go back to work, Stanley. the fuck just happened chat dude i'm pretty sure we just fucked a bucket fuck the bucket of ice chat all of his co-workers were gone what could it mean I, i'm gonna to go speed to run this and see if we can Perhaps get that uh, last collectible or one of the last collectibles and also jump to that catwalk stanley just smile don't go to the meeting room go somewhere else the cargo lift yes go there go to the cargo lift figured that out pretty oh jeez almost fell Click You're it. getting close now, Stanley. You've nearly got one left, all chat. the Figler and Marines. One Very left. soon, you'll collect the last one, and then the first number will equal the second number, and that will be it. We'll be different people by then, yes, different in the sense that we used to have none of them, and now we have them all. You can't go back to when you had no Figler and Marines. None of us can. Holy shit. Now, can we get down there without dying? That open B door is exciting, but I don't. I think that would just lead to nothing. Now, where does this go? I can't really see it. Oh. Whoa. I don't know if I've ever gotten this ending. I definitely didn't do it with a bucket. Okay, this is day number 295, tape number. <laughs> I don't even know, I've lost track. Nothing feels real anymore. The longer I study this bucket, the less sense anything makes. The sheer euphoria I feel every time I pick it up. No matter how many times I've done it, it's always the same feeling. And the emptiness in my chest when I set it down. Oh, it doesn't make sense. There's no explanation for it. I still haven't figured out why I see the world so differently when this bucket is in my arms. Why everything feels so... What do I do with this treasure? I can... I can monetize it. Yes. It's unthinkable the amounts of money people will pay for even just an hour with the bucket. This is my golden ticket. But I have to be careful. Because as soon as this gets out, there's going to be a target on my back. Even now, I don't know who might be trying to get me. What's that? Who's there? Camarada. Totally a female orgasm sound in there, Chad. You heard it, didn't you? the fuck, dude? All right, let's speed run and get to the catwalk this All time. All his co-workers were gone. All right, Chad, I'm going to try to jump to that walkway there. Pretty good chance I'll fuck this up. And you know what? I might still flamingo my legs anyway. I don't know if this is even possible. Let's give it a shot, though. Good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. 
It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not oh. to think about this obvious fact. Minimal clearance, but we did it. That the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. I ain't supposed to be here. Chat, you know when you do something that you know you shouldn't do, but you continue to do it anyway? This feels like that. No, stop. Look there on the wall. You see, there's a sign right there. It says, no buckets past this point. Stanley, how could you think it was okay to bring the bucket here? Unless, what if the problem is that you actually don't know what is a bucket and what isn't a bucket? I suppose that would explain a lot about your behavior up to this point. Which, if that's true, well, my goodness, my goodness. I think we have to do something about it. This misunderstanding could have dire consequences on the entire rest of the game if not addressed quickly and properly. So much of the impact of the story is dependent on your understanding of what is and isn't a bucket. Please, step in here for a moment. Now then, I'm going to run you through some test scenarios and you'll tell me whether or not the thing I'm showing you is a bucket. Simply enough, right? This should tell us everything we'll ever need to know about what is or is not a bucket. Okay, let's begin. Item one, is this Music was fired, chat. Yes. Incorrect. It is a hologram of a bucket, not an actual bucket. Yeah, get this Item one wrong. Two. Is this a bucket? Yes. Incorrect. It is a 3D printed recreation of a bucket, not an actual bucket. Fish paste. Item three. Is this a bucket? Can you get any closer, can I? I mean, that has to be a bucket. Correct. This is a bucket. Sweet. At 33% success rate so far, give or take, you know? Not bad. Item four. Is this a bucket? I mean, I gotta follow my entire life. And anything that ever led to this moment. And growing up and... Being near some farms growing up, gotta say that's not a bucket. Correct. Okay, good. This is a tractor and not a bucket. Yeah, I, I thought to be so. Honest, I just sort of put this one in here as a gimme, but I was starting to get concerned that even this might be too much for you. No, Thank not at all. I didn't even think about it much. Yet. Okay, next one. <laughs> is this a bucket? Incorrect. This is a bucket. Item six. Is this a bucket? What? Yeah, that's a bucket. Trick question. Both. Gotcha. You're not going to explain why it's both? How the fuck is that a trick I question? Just, wait, hold on. I can't find the next one. Let me see. It should be around here somewhere. Uh, 
Okay, you and I both know there isn't anything here. And I don't appreciate the implication that nothing is a bucket when we both clearly know that a bucket is something, and therefore nothing could possibly be something. Unless, in your twisted mind, have you somehow convinced yourself that a bucket is nothing? Answer me straight, Stanley. Do you believe that nothing is a bucket? Can nothing be a bucket, chat? No, but my mouth can be, says one chatter. You know what? I'm too confused to even sort it out. Me too. I've lost all sense of perspective. What is a bucket? What isn't a bucket? Mere moments ago, I could answer these questions with confidence. And yet now I'm somewhat adrift. Do any of us know what a bucket is? Am I a bucket? Am I Stanley, I can't keep doing this. I'm losing myself, and myself was all I ever had to begin with. I'm afraid the bucket is threatening to tear our relationship apart. I can't have that. I'm sorry, but I'm going to erase all buckets from the game entirely. Okay, here we go. Did we lose our bucket privileges? What happened? Is everything gone? Why did everything disappear? Wait, was everything a bucket? Every single thing in the game was a bucket. That means I was oh correct. Oh my god, I had no idea. How could... Wait, no, I said nothing can be me. a bucket. But... I'm not a bucket after all. And you, Stanley, you're still here. You're not a bucket either. Oh, this is wonderful news. We're not buckets. We're not buckets, Chad. Yes, I actually feel much more at ease right now. It's delightful to get some clarity on that issue. But it doesn't change the fact that we haven't got a game. So, tell you what. I'll reset everything, and we'll put back all of the buckets, okay? And we'll know that it's all a bucket. But if you run into anyone else, maybe don't mention that. Who knows what that information might do to a person? All right, here we go. The whole game's a bucket. So when they came up with all the new content for this game, they literally just made buckets. Like, you gotta respect that to some degree, chat. Like, instead of, like, coming up with, like, an insane amount of, like, crazy new uh, mechanics, they just added a bucket to every possible ending. That's kind of fucking incredible. Buckets of new content. I think it's the opposite of laziness. In a weird way, I think it's the opposite of laziness. And there's a reason why this game's so critically acclaimed. Yeah, what if I do that walkway without the bucket? Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been- What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why? I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Man, I got much more. I, I evoked a lot more reaction out of him this time. When I hit the bucket, he didn't really care that I did that. He really didn't care. No buckets past this point. I don't have a bucket. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Chat, do we want the fun, exciting red room? Or the blue room? Or a third party emerges. And there it is. The last Stiggly Wiggly. Savor this moment, Stanley. This is a real accomplishment. This is doing something just for the sake of doing it. Where so many people expect to be rewarded for the most trivial achievements, you've insisted that a job well done is its own reward. I would tell you that I'm proud of you for collecting them all, but that would be like a reward, and we can't have that. So, instead I'll just say, Do blue it's like done. my balls. We're all done here. And now we can go to whatever the hell you were doing before you hunted for figurines. I already found all six because we haven't even gone to the left door yet. Actually, I think two of them are over there. I'm gonna go. Can we get any any preview? Can we get any any special? No, it doesn't look like it. Let's do the blue one. We've kind of 
kind of disobeyed all of his orders leading up to this point. So let's go through the blue door, because he insisted on the red. Aha. Perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. This? Oh. Can't even go back if we wanted to, bruh. I still don't think we're communicating properly. Oh, I'm starting to remember Stanley this. Walked I think I have done through this before. the red door. Oh! All right, fine. Go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. I kind of want to go back. It looks a little ominous and... No. You see? There's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Was it worth ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for you? Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing. Because this is what you wanted to see. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. Tell you what. Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design and you can give me some feedback. There we go. A third option. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for a spin. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. A one? I mean, I can understand if you had reservations, you saw ways the game could be improved to more fully express itself mechanically. And Ha ha, Speedy, you left me taking care of your aunt and the pigs are starting to rise up. He they started talking about stocks and some weird conspiracy about the Duke. He shoot to he anyways, bro. I was milking your bulls and the bucket just disappeared. And I wanted you to know because I had to store the milk in my mouth and walk it over to the empty pans in the kitchen. Lamau, dude, I don't know how chickens work, bro. Am I supposed to take the egg out myself? He he. Also, your horse ran away. Ha ha. Oh, yeah, I needed the bucket from that game for this game. Sorry if that caused any issues. And you should wait for the chicken to lay the egg. You shouldn't go up in there searching for it. That seems like a bad idea. Now, artistically, but a one? That's not even helpful. What am I supposed to do with that? Uh, but I guess it isn't my place to judge. Here, based on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. The Stanley Parable. Worldwide leaderboard. Skid Marks is in second place, guys. Did you know that 21% of players skipped the intro sequence? Only the worst 3% of players chose the blue door? I chose the blue door! How long does it take you to get to the correct door? What the fuck? 9,328th? A dead rat did better than me. Hey, time out. Do I actually have 7 hours and 37 minutes of playtime? No, these are fake statistics. This fucker, I have 3.1 hours. Oh, wait. Oh, it's probably adding to my original game's playtime. This is just the Ultra Deluxe. It's the Red Room. That's what you really want. Now, would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. I mean, honestly, it, it did 
motivate me not to be worst place anymore. I personally feel motivated. I, I think five is the correct answer, chat. A lot of you guys disagree. I'm gonna go five, because that did kind of piss me the fuck off. Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game I've been working on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some playtesting. You wouldn't mind taking a look at it, would you? Perfect. Let me boot it up. Sweet, I didn't really get a chance to answer, but yeah. In this game, the baby crawls left oh, towards danger. This. You click the button to move him back to the right, and if he reaches the fire, you fail. I remember it's this. It's a very meaningful game, all about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. So why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? Be sure to keep notes on your experience. I have to do this for four hours? I've only been streaming for one hour and three minutes. This is gonna be a long. Oh fuck! I almost missed. Someone's actually done that for four hours too. Oh, I'm sure hundreds of people probably have. This is a Shadow Beats thing. This is the type of dumb shit Shadow Beats would do. He would sit here for four hours and do this. Anyway, I'm gonna kill the fucking chap. I had a slight feeling of remorse, but now I don't care anymore. You heartless bastard horrible audio mixing and they get all these awards did you do it because you hate babies or purely to spite me Both. because if it's the latter well i don't know what to do i'm completely out of ideas i can't think of a single thing that might improve the experience for me i'm not even going to try i'm out i'm out i'm done it's over thank you for playing your input was extremely valuable oh hey since my game was so awful why don't we play someone else's game just to ease the pain. Let's see. What do we have? There are more games. Fell asleep. Woke back up. What the genuine fuck is this? Yes. This seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. Did you get woken up by a big buzzard? Um, and that's a bird. Not a, I must say buzzer. Oh, no Aha. fucking way. Is this fascinating? Is this Firewatch? What do you think this game is about, Stanley? What's our backstory? What is our motivation? Hmm. What is this? Well, it seems obvious to me that you are meant to play as a creepy man spying on innocent civilians below you from up high in your creep tower, perhaps for some sort of twisted erotic purpose. Hmm. Yes, that must be it. What a fascinating venture into the experience of total mental depravity. So far, I love everything about this game, Stanley. And it seems there's even more. Come, let's venture outward and see what else is out there. Venture. Let's come outward. I never played Firewatch. Oh, I really fucked this one up. What the fuck are we doing on Firewatch now? Oh no. No, 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 it can't be. How far off track can we go? It is. It's an open world game. Good God, quickly block it off. Oh, thank goodness, Stanley. What a close call. You it's really just my question that, pretty well. That thing, that big open, just wandering around, no right or wrong directions, no path to follow. You can just go in any... Oh, oh, oh thank heavens we avoided it. We're out of the woods now, Stanley. Okay, I'm going to get us out of here. Let's find another game. Preferably something with walls. Something with nice, big, insurmountable walls. Goodbye, Firewatch. <laughs> okay, I think this will be just the thing. Rocket League! Wonderful. See, this is exactly what I had in mind. Just a nice big box for you to run around in. There isn't any possibility that you could get lost here. Now this is game design. 
Stanley, if you manage to get lost in this game, I will be phenomenally impressed. Holy shit, dude. It's Epic Games Rocket League. Okay, so what exactly do this we do here? Is this my here? hole? Let's see. Oh. There are lots of cars dude, here the in the back, here, but obviously so there's happy. no racetrack. Okay, I'm seeing that there's a ball of some kind back here. Is this game sports ball? Stanley, I think it's sports ball. Oh, what fun. We shall run the bases and do a touchdown together. Yes, I think surely we must. Surely we okay, must. Okay, Stanley, here's the ball. Have fun. Oh, that would have been cool. That could kill you. Should I score a soccer ball? Go. We air dribble? Are you doing it? Are you winning? Is this fun? Is it better than my miserable little story that I work so hard on? Where's my goal explosion? Stanley, I have a thought. And I realize I'm not a sportsologist, but if one ball generates a certain amount of raw adrenal pleasure, raw. then surely multiple balls makes for an even more euphoric sports experience. I'm going Hold on. What are you doing? Stanley, don't do that. I can't follow you there. I can't help you. How will you write a story without me? You can't do it. You know that. Stanley, come back. Okay, I gotta be honest, guys. When I scored the soccer, it, it seemed like the ball dropped into something, and I wanted to see where it went. I assumed even if I did that, I would become the ball and drop down from the middle, but now I'm all alone. Can we, like, go anywhere? I'm gonna need a torch, which is what British people call the flashlight on their cellular device. I guess we'll just keep hugging right. Oh, that's fucking scary. Imagine there's a guy just jacking it in that room, just buddies fucking LAO pouring. Holy shit. Just whacking it, dude. Buddy, and you can tell on the screen, Buddy's watching a little FPOV, and there's no reason to judge that, by the way, but you definitely are thinking to yourself, why is Buddy watching FPOV right now, bro? I wonder what he found. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it. Down in wherever he is right now. No. I wonder if he's happy with his choice, and if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll understand soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. Someone who will wrap everything up at the end to make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. That's who I am. That is what I mean to this world. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be back. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, then I'll be back. The end will be here soon. Very soon. I can wait. I'm back. All of his co-workers are gone. What could this mean? Perhaps he simply missed a memo. Stanley, I'm sorry, but I have to put a pause on things. It's just, it's those figurines, those figlers. I haven't stopped thinking about them since you nabbed every last one. Wasn't it just the most intrinsically fulfilling moment of your entire life? Didn't it fill you to the brim with inner richness? Yes, I know we're supposed to be telling a story, but won't you please indulge me with one more trip back to the memory zone? I would love nothing more than to revisit the figurines. Just one more time. Victorines did mean something. They did mean something. What if he lets me find another six? 
now remembering when Stanley found the Collectables. Doors that open for you. That's when you know you made it, chat. What a great year. Ah, here's where it all began. The first collectible. Back then, we had no idea of how many of them we'd find. Sure, it said six right there on the screen, but how could we know for certain? We were so innocent. We'll never be like that again, Stanley. I have still gone here even if I And didn't. here was the second Stanlerine. You found this one all on your own just by poking around behind the boss's office. You did that, Stanley. I'll be honest, back then I had no faith in you to find any of them, let alone six. But you continue to surprise me in all sorts of mundane, unremarkable ways. Yo, the fuck though, like what happens if I didn't come in here? Oh shit. Okay, let's do a little quiz. Which of these rooms was the room you found your third mini stand? Can you remember? It would have been boss's bathroom. Because I would have found that the second time I went through the bosses and the last one. I... No, no, no. The boss's bathroom was the fourth place you found a thick anime, not the third. Well, I guess perhaps I shouldn't be surprised. Memories like these are so precious and so cherished. Could you imagine being the voice actor together, for this game? They? You know I what? think he needs if himself a bucket to hold. Feels like the third place you found a collectible. Then who am I to go making judgments? Thanks, Bucket Boy, for the Let's three. See. What came next? Oh yes, we found a figly in this pink room. Oh, well, I can't actually say I remember being in this room, but it's here in the memory zone, so it must have happened. I don't remember this, bro. This was the fifth mini stand, and this one was really something special. It was in the warehouse. I remember it so clearly. In fact, because this one is particularly special to me, I made a little video to commemorate the occasion. We're still one Enjoy. behind, though. Because I didn't pick it. That's literally what happened. I literally looked back and was like, it's mini stand five. <laughs> then I almost fell off trying to get it, bro. This is actually what happened. How'd they know? you back doesn't it i spent a lot of time making that video but it was eight minutes i wouldn't have spent on anything else the fuck is this now dude this is where we found the sixth and then, Stanley, then we came to the last collectible, the final figurine, right here by the red and blue doors. 
This memory is the most distinctly right clear we in my it. mind. Perhaps because it. it was the one that happened more recently than all the others. Who can truly say how the mind works? All I know is that this is the moment where you picked up a figly and I thought to myself, yes, that's all of them. They're all collected. It was a moment unlike any other, except for the other moments picking up figurines, which it was exactly like. Doesn't matter this time. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Dude, that's my screen. Dude, that's fucking with my brain. This is the equivalent of ripping the rear view mirror off your car because you ain't looking back, bro. And then there was no more because we've caught up to the present moment. Nothing left to do but move onward into the future. Goodbye, memory zone. Um. Uh... No, 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 I'm not done. I'm not ready to move on. Stop the loading screen. Isn't there some way we can stay here, keep enjoying the these figurines? Let's just go backwards. That's the fern. We'll do the memory zone again from the opposite direction. See how that feels. It's the fucking fern. Okay, yes, the room with the red and blue doors. I remember this. I must say, of all the figurines we looked at in our initial tour of the memory zone, this one is the most distinct and clear in my mind. Let's keep going, I want more. Wait. And here's where I made that video. Don't you remember the video we watched? Yes, I love that video. Yeah, what happens if I flamingo my legs right now, though? Like, do I not continue this? Is it just over? I don't want. That's the problem, because I don't want to miss out on what's what's to come here. But part of me wants to flamingo my legs, but I think I would just respawn on a new day. And I could totally just end it right now with a jolly flamingo. I also want to know what's through door B down there, but I don't even know if you can get down there. Here's that apple one that no one remembers. Still don't remember the pink room, Stanley. Still no memory of this one. Good room, though. A solid room. And this has to be something more than just a pointless pink room that we've never seen before. These really were a treat to hunt down. You know, if there had been any kind of reward for finding all of these, it really would have neutered the intrinsic joy of collecting them. I'm very glad we resisted the temptation. Next one. We don't get that one. This was our second figly. Don't you remember? Yes, I remember it too. The past is truly a wonderful thing. Why does anyone ever choose to leave it? Keep going. This is it. The very first one we found in the exhibit where I introduced you to the figlerines. Oh, I want more memories, Stanley. I want to keep going. What else is there? What came before this? Should have 18. I fucked it.
This isn't the... This isn't the room this was in before. Look, it's the terrible new content that we were originally sold on. I remember hating it back then. Still no the jump shot. put a rosy filter on everything. In fact, I dare say I'm actually quite fond of it now. Look how much fun the past is. I want more. More memories. Oh, yes. The two doors. Who could have forgotten that? A classic memory, this one. Oh, my God. The narrator is a Cowboys fan. As much he enjoys the past, he must be. Both lead to the same spot once more. And before everything else, there was your office. Is there anything else? Was there something that came before your office? There's something I feel I can remember. I can remember. I can remember. Yes, I'm remembering something now. I remember before this whole story got started. Back then, I was... I was different. I used to make big decisions. I was passionate. I was skeptical. I weighed each decision with profound thoughtfulness. And then, somewhere along the way, I stopped making decisions. I became lazy, and I came up with, well, came up with a character named Stanley to do my thinking for me. He would make the decisions, he would decide which way to go. I would cheer him on as he collected figurines for no reason. Why did I invent Stanley? Was I lonely? Yes, perhaps that's it. Perhaps I needed to imagine I had companionship. And Stanley really did make for a wonderful companion, even if he was a fiction. But uh, I suppose it's grown old. I, I want to think for myself again. I want to go back to how it used to be. Yes, I can be on my own again. I can do it. I'll be stronger this time. I'll take care of myself. I don't need Stanley anymore. Oh, but he truly was so much fun to play with. You know what? Since we're in the memory zone, how about one more good memory? One Let's more good go memory? Back just once and give Stanley one more run of the office and then I'll retire him for good. I did enjoy telling his story so very much. Okay, here we go. This is the story of a man named Stanley. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Ah, the embrace of an old friend. A weathered companionship that stands the test of time. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Not on that broom closet shit. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation.
the elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read, Mind Control Facility. Now, Chad, I do need your help for this. At this point, with the bucket, last time I played, I did go through here, right? It's this I didn't do, right? Pretty sure this is where I saw Slack. I mean, the seagulls. We did do both? Is there anything new I could... Is there, like, a third option, then? It's hard to remember what you haven't done in this game yet. Go back up the escalator. Does he even let you do that, though? If light is on... I think you guys are right. I think I did do both of these. Let me leave. Oh, this is new. I Wait, you do this. Stanley said to the bucket. Can we go back up? When I was pressing those keypad buttons, there was something very intriguing about the number three. I want to go back so I can try pressing the number three again. The bucket said nothing. Fuck, dude. It's crazy how there's like always a third option. You think there's only two, but there's always like a third. Any chance we could introduce a third tonight, babe? Here we are, said Stanley. Now I'm going to try out that number three button. He took the bucket over to the keypad and began absolutely slamming on the number three over and over and over. Wow, he said. The number three is such a special button, I'm having the time of my life. Stanley looked expectantly at the bucket, but the bucket remained silent. This was a shock to Stanley, who had always felt such a connection with the bucket. How was this not as exciting to the bucket as it was to him? Once Stanley had had enough of the number three, he got back in the elevator. Perhaps the bucket had missed something. Perhaps it had not seen how much joy Stanley got from slamming the number three repeatedly. Oh, a hint of regret nagged in the back of Stanley's mind. Should he demonstrate the number three for the bucket again? No, 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 said Stanley to the bucket. You can't go on yet. Not till you understand how much the number three means to me. You and I have been through so much together, and I just want you to see what I see. Feel the happiness I feel. He smiled at the bucket, and the bucket said nothing. Here we go, said Stanley. This time, I'll really show you. He ran to the number three and began to wail on it like a musician on a beloved instrument, weaving a concerto of truth and passion. He wielded the number three like a fine artist would wield a paintbrush. He told stories through the number three, stories of his dreams and hopes and fears. And the whole time, he looked to his bucket for a reaction of some kind, anything to let him know that the bucket appreciated what he was doing. The bucket conveyed absolutely nothing at all, only silence. Crushed by a wave of dejection, Stanley returned to the elevator. Just wish the bucket understood, bro. Stanley and the bucket were so close, they'd always been there for one another. Why suddenly could the bucket not connect with this passion of Stanley's? The question caused Stanley to ruminate the whole way down the elevator. He knew that there must be a way to get through to the bucket, to communicate fully with his dear friend. Surely there was a solution, mustn't there be? It doesn't feel like it. Jesus. Stanley and the Bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read, Mind Control Facility. 
if we type 914 into it, does it do anything? That's not a four letter code or four number code though, so would that do anything? Fuck it, I'll try it. What else are we gonna do with our lives, chat? <laughs> said Stanley. I know what to do. I know how to fully express this feeling in my heart. Jeez, thank he you. Decided right then and there that he would hold a press conference where he would speak to the public on all matters relating to pressing the number three over and over. He would elaborate fully on what the number three meant to him and why he felt so alive when pressing it. Then the bucket would be able to see his joy through the eyes of others. It would get to see the world react to this discovery of Stanley's. And it would be through the public eye that the bucket would finally understand Stanley's work. Doesn't matter about that number. I don't think it would have worked months, anyway. He advertised and marketed his press conference, building excitement around it, developing and rehearsing it until it couldn't be refined a single measure further. When the big day arrived, Stanley was as prepared as he'd ever been for anything in his life. I feel like that guy didn't build the pyramids. Appreciate you. Welcome back. The Stanley Parable Stanley tonight, live on stage. The man, the process, the myth, the legend, the parable. On stage tonight, world's first scientific machine. This was it. One last chance to win the bucket over. One opportunity to share a true connection with a loved one. But then, Nick. Congratulations, Stanley. Remember where you came from, your co-workers. What is that picture? What does it mean? Dude, I'm nervous. It's gonna be quite the performance. Yeah, that's my cubicle number, the 427. <clears throat> there was no one here. Nobody had come to the press conference to hear Stanley speak, to listen to him talk about what it really means to press the number three on a keypad over and over. He was unloved, uninteresting, he was a failure. And in that moment, Stanley knew that the bucket would never again take him seriously. There would be no connection, no deeper understanding. The bucket merely sat there in his arms, indifferent. And so it began that slowly, over many years, the two of them grew more and more distant. They spoke less and less, neither wishing to state the obvious that any sense of real respect between them had eroded since that day at the press conference. There would be no more games, no more long conversations about passion and pursuit only a silence that consumed the space between friends. And Stanley, having for once in his life discovered the warmth and comfort of true companionship, was cast back into the unremarkable normalcy of loneliness. I tried to walk off the edge, Shadow wouldn't let me. That's not the office, chat. Chat, that's not the office. This is weird. The bucket made Stanley want to be a better man and a better co- Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Why did it start me like this? Why did it, like, expedite the process to get here? I don't want to go left. I feel like we've done all the options, though. This was not the correct way to the meeting room. Perhaps he didn't even realize he'd forgotten his bucket at home. Hopefully this just starts us and it doesn't begin the whole game again. What the fuck is this, dude? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? 
Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Not everyone is so lucky to have a bucket, but Stanley is a very lucky fellow. Very lucky. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his lap. This was not the correct way to the meeting room. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Go there. Go to the cargo lift. I'm gonna see if we can get down through that door. But it's so white out there and I think it just leads to the outside that I don't think there's any content there. Plus we'll probably just flamingo our legs. So that's a pretty far drop. But Stanley feared that any path he walked might lead to the separation of himself and the bucket. I don't think he can get down there, Jeff. I don't think so he, he can do it. threw himself to his death <laughs> that they might die in <laughs> one another's arms. How deeply it touched you. Yeah, I don't think that's happening, bro. Alright, so last time I turned it on, this time we're gonna turn it off. Stanley and the bucket waited in blackness. Was it over? Yes, they had done it. Stanley and the bucket had defeated their greatest and darkest enemy, freed themselves from the tyrannical grip of the evil mind control machine. Freedom was now mere moments away. Excitedly, the two of them began to discuss the kind of life they wanted to live once they stepped through this massive door. The Bucket wanted to learn to roller skate. Stanley wanted to sneeze in every country on Earth. Both of them wanted to begin watching a movie, any movie, but then stop it halfway through and begin watching it in reverse from the end. True, it was a simple life they envisioned, but it was one they'd lived together, with one another to lean on, to trust, to support, and to... What? Wait. What was happening? Why had the door stopped? Was Stanley and the Bucket not about to be freed? An unbearable silence filled the room, lingering in uncertainty, until finally the truth hit Stanley square in the face. This building did not want the Bucket to leave. Even the facility itself recognized the incredible calming presence of the Bucket, needed the soothing warmth of the Bucket, to go to any lengths not to part with the Bucket. No, no, no. Stanley can't leave this place, not while he has such a precious bucket in his arms, not while this building has anything to say about it. Stanley realized he would never again leave this very room, but at least, at least he has the bucket. To be trapped eternally in darkness isn't really so bad, Stanley thought to himself. As long as I have my bucket with me, right? I'll be okay, won't I? Stanley gulped. Very soon now, he was about to find out. What was that little text box? Oh, Chad, I thought we had the good ending. But alas, we didn't. We didn't have the good ending, Chad.